People always ask me, why am I always in the six? And apart from the culture, the women, the strip clubs, the lifestyle, there's a scene up there that nobody's touched. I'm going to ask you a question. Off the top of your tongue, when I say Toronto, what artist can you think of? I bet you're going to say Drake. Which is dope. Drake's done his thing. Put your city on. That's what you're meant to do when you're from a city. Put your city on. But when you dig deep into the streets of Toronto in the GTA area, there's so many artists in these streets. Yeah. We want to one. Yeah. See all my niggas in it for the funds. Yeah. The club we throw in 20s, not no ones. Yeah. My young and walk up on you. I'm Flash Johnson, UK music video director. For the last year I've been travelling to Toronto, not just to shoot music videos, but because of the similarities between the culture of London and Canada. Along my way I've met so many different artists, models, managers, engineers. In London we have a scene that's heard by many people across the world. So what's up with Toronto from being the next up? Stopping Toronto from being the next stop. Mm. Support, man. That's our that's our biggest issue right now in Toronto. Like, there's so much politics going on there, and it's just like, I don't know. We don't support each other. Banana Coach is an OVO basketball coach for Drake's October's very own basketball team, as well as being a coach in the court. He's a manager and a mentor to a few rising stars coming out of Toronto. Who from Toronto I think can break through the UK? Um, Northside Benji, um, Lil Six, Thoroughbred, Fila. I want to see the city do something like a. Uh... Like how Charlie Sloth is doing that shit. Like you, see, you feel what I'm saying how he's bringing every, all all the underground artists into the into a one. You know what I'm saying a one atmosphere and making them show their talent. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just do you like, think? Do you, think like, do you think that could happen out here? Like, do you oh, think? Hundred no, percent. All, all it takes is city love. All, everybody just needs to get together. Just stop all the hate shit. You feel me? If niggas want to do music, niggas do music. If niggas want to do the street shit, y'all niggas do the street shit. You feel me? Just keep that shit separate. You feel me? Why would I say yeah. Toronto doesn't have city love? <laughs> um, <laughs> that place is it, Toronto's a beautiful city, man. You know, but it's just too much hate there, man. Too much hate, too much politics. And the, like I said, nobody wants to support each other, bro. Like it's like you gotta leave Toronto, get big, then come back, and everybody starts supporting you. It's like the same thing that happened with Drake. We was really with messing with Drake from the jump. So when he went to the States, got big, signed, and he came back, and then, yeah, that's where everybody's a Drake fan now. But every night he gotta sleep with his eyes open. You don't know how this life goes. So stop acting like you know how my life goes. Shit, it's crazy how they do us. First day arrested, didn't wanna shoot us. I just do a bundle at the jeweler. Cash. Work hard, had to hustle and maneuver. So boom, right now I'm going to Lakeshore. Um, Lakeshore is sick, like the locations are sick down there. It's where you can see the whole of Toronto from the other side of the city. So I want to go and shoot the big sick cipher down there. So I just want to go and look at the locations and see where I want to shoot the cipher, man. So boom, yeah, let's do this. It's Flash Johnson, AKA Mr. Movies Only. And you better respect my clout because this is the big six cipher. From the six to the UK, we don't go to Nando's, we don't go on dates. I direct shit like Flash Johnson. I'm sorting out his numbers like a math problem. Still putting coke and tires, still wash the wire, still tell you that you're shit, even though I'm biased. In late 2017, I worked for an artist called Northside Benji on his track entitled Confessions. While he was in London, we released a video, not realizing the response we were going to get. This video enabled me to pack my bags and leave for Toronto for three weeks, not realizing how hard it's going to be. Oh no, man. Don't, don't get disheartened. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know me, I'm not giving up. One thing I'm not gonna do here is I'm not gonna give up, I'm still gonna go in. Mm -hmm. like, see, all it takes here, over here, this is what I clocked in the city, yeah? It takes one video. 
when I do that one video and it goes out and everything that I'm saying that oh yeah your video on link up if link if link up accept it and then if they link up to you you accept it it goes in there and they're like raw yeah he's about it he's not talking shit I've come all the way to Toronto yeah based on people saying they want to fuck with me which I appreciate it and I was like you know what if I don't try then how else am I gonna fucking know if this move's gonna work you know what I mean like I come to the back of no investments. I've got no investors. I come to the back of my own hard work, my own money. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, today I have one of them days was like, I've had like a couple clients told me, yeah, we're going to sit and have the meeting, seal the deal, and, you know, not answer their phone. And like, I'm not your girlfriend, innit? I'm not going to ring off your phone. You get me? Like, I'm not one of them people that's going to ring off your phone, innit? If you don't call me back, it is what it is. But, I don't know, man. It's only been what two days. There, today's my second full day, so you know that like, I can't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not giving up. This is my journey. This is what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? This is what I decided to do. So I know I'm not gonna be here for three weeks and not shoot one video. You know what I mean? I'm trying to. I got a couple videos that I definitely should be able to shoot. You get me? Excuse me. I'm foreign. It's nice to meet you. Twenties and fifties and hundreds. You watch. I can teach you. I feel like a leader, I'm leading the people Me and you, we are not equal Yeah, yeah Ooh. Yeah Sis got blah, boy, sis got blah, boy Sis got blah, boy, sis got blah, boy One, two, three, yeah. let's go Nine on one, shall be drive, look alive, look alive What is stopping Toronto from being the next stop? Nothing, the door's open I think, personally, I think it's all there for the taking. The, the, the bridge is being gapped month by month and year by year. Um, obviously, Drake has played a big factor in that. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't think nothing's stopping them. Nathan Hector is an actor, host, and has starred in a few blockbuster films across the UK. And is also in Toronto, embracing the rap culture. Um... I feel like they need more girls, more female, more female artists. Like I haven't, I don't know any, I know a couple, but not that are like popping, popping on another level. I feel like they need more females, more female artists, rappers, singers. Even when it's busy, it's still laid back. They're very laid back people. Um, they're very welcoming. Um, and I, I, that's, that's just it. That's just what really attracts me to the city. They're very, very welcoming. And a lot of people that live there, especially within the black community, what was really refreshing for me is that they know where they're from in terms of background. So Guyana, Dominica, Jamaica, um, Nigeria, Ghana, you know, it's, it's very refreshing to kind of go to somewhere like North America, Canada, and, and talk, to, talk to people that look like me and they know where they're from, you know. Forty and Drake were like the first to kind of pioneer a whole new sound and and really rep Toronto, you know. Though, though, that's kind of the first artist that I saw. And then along came The weekend, Party Next Door, Tory Lanes, etc, etc, you know. So I just feel like it's, 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 a, it's a ripple effect, you know. And um, I do feel like on a worldwide scale, it could it could happen for them, man, definitely. But what about the artists from the streets? Because there's artists that I I know, I your young Tories, your little three, six, three six five, big lean, yeah, 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 man, it, it could happen, man, 110. percent It's just about timing and and what content you're putting out, you know. So I do feel like it's it's all it's all within due time because they can't like you can't ignore great music. It's just simple, it's fact. You know what's mad? After talking to Banana Coach and Nathan Hector. I still believe Toronto could be next up. But the only way for me to find this out if I go to the city and talk to the artists, part of the culture. So I think the next up is Toronto. On the northern shore of Lake Ontario, near the US border, lies Canada's largest city. Toronto is the capital of the province of Ontario and is a major economic and cultural centre for the country. 
Founded as York by the British in the late 1700s, Toronto is now a proudly Canadian city, and nearly 6 million people call the Greater Toronto Area home. That may be the Toronto that you know, but it's not the Toronto that I know. If artists are gathering millions of views on their music videos, and millions of streams via digital outlets, why is Toronto's rap culture not emerging as fast as the UK's? I've come to Toronto to talk to a few of the artists that plays a part of the culture and find out what could be done to make Toronto's rap culture next up. Get slapped to this, they know the real. Free the dogs and the demons. Take a trip to the east and see the not After a seven hour flight, I made it to Toronto. I'm at the centre that birthed the Canadian rap culture. Artists such as Drake, Tory Lanez, The Weeknd, and many more. But what's stopping the artists from Toronto from being next up? Important for you, eh? Free. See that feeling? See that feeling? Yeah, freedom. That's what freedom smells like. That's what fucking freedom smells like. I don't need those. Oh yeah, best believe it. Where I'm from, it gets like that. You know? Fuck murders, robberies. I mean, drug dealing. All types of shit, kidnappings. All types of shit. This shit goes down. You know what I mean? How do you survive through this shit? You just gotta survive through it. You just gotta, you just gotta know how to be fit. You gotta adapt. So I'm saying that shit we did. You know what I'm saying we adapt. You know what I mean? Now we're here. Fuck it. You Nothing know else to it, but just keep pushing. You feel me? It's a blessing at the end of the day. What can you really say about it? I'm saying a lot of my niggas not here to even talk about this shit. You feel me? But here I am right now, putting the city on my back. You feel me? And just giving them that real life shit, that real rap. I mean shit that niggas can relate to, shit that real bitches can relate to. You know what I'm saying? Real shit that my city can relate to. That shit. What's stopping Toronto from being the next stop? I feel everybody in Toronto, a lot of people in Toronto need to put their feelings to the side and, and um, focus on the business, man. Keep your ethics high. Real shit. Stop trying to get the clout off a of next nigga. Like, come with some real music and, and come together. People in Toronto need to come together. Niggas in the city need to come together and just stop doing that sucker shit. Stop hating on one another. You know what I mean? Acknowledge each other and, 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 and watch everybody else rise, my nigga. Like, just congratulate the other player, you know? Definitely. That'll make Toronto be the next stop because obviously Toronto's on, Toronto, Toronto's on the podium. But for the ones that's looking from the outside the box, looking in, when they get to Toronto and they see the dynamics of this shit, they realize it's not, it's not everything from what they see. So I feel like yeah, from 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 a, from a city's perspective, yeah, niggas gotta put certain shit aside and, and focus on the business. Come together. If it's music, it's music. But I mean, if it's not, keep that shit over there. You know what I mean? That shit. We got a beautiful city. Pearl Red is an artist from Toronto, raised in Aldwick Boulevard, Finch West. After facing trials and tribulations with the law, he's been able to come out on top and flourish his talent with his album. Trust is a luxury in the Toronto rap culture. Everybody has their own experience in the city. You know what I mean? And not everybody lives the same life. So with me, with me, me, me staying in my lane, I feel like when you listen to me, you're going to get a reflection of my perspective of the city. You know what I mean? So I can't really, I can't really say what I want the city to sound like. Only thing I could do is be me and and give you a perspective of my kind of the city. That's as real as I could put it. That's just as honest as I can be when it comes to painting pictures and how people perceive the city as what it is. Can I see the Toronto rap culture flourishing in the UK? Yeah, I can see that happening, definitely. You know, it's almost like the same kind of culture, you know? Like the same kind of culture, the same kind of lingo almost, you know, and um We kinda relate we kinda relate to one another, you know what I'm saying? Like this I mean there's a it's a lot a lot a lot a lot of things are relatable. You feel me? So and we embrace each other more than and we embrace each other more than um than the States does. And that's just the real, so I can see that happening. Definitely, I can see that happening. These outlets, these outlets only take you so far like you know what i'm saying it's like almost like a a small a small community that these outlets can really reach to you know what i mean and i i feel you but i had a million dollars to take the rap culture 
in the city to a whole new level, what would I do? Shit, I would force everybody, every every outlet that's playing music, streaming music. You know what I mean? All these playlists, I make sure that you know we are priority. You feel me? We we'll set up a system where everybody, every everybody could benefit from working together, almost like a coalition. You know what I mean? I feel like that's what the city needs. The city needs almost like that. That, that, that coalition mindset And it's crazy Because I'm gonna say something right now And it's so crazy Say history History repeats itself And it's coming full circle A lot of people Won't acknowledge this shit But Like I come from a Toronto Where like You know what I mean Chocolate Cardinal Socrates You know what I'm saying Baby Blue Sound Crew and shit You know what I mean I, I was just a fucking teeny bop Not even a teeny bop I was like middle school and shit But those guys from the outside looking in, when you were seeing Toronto rap scene back then, those guys almost had this kind of like a syndicate coalition feel where it was like, these are the guys. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could not see one without the other or hear one without the other. It was almost like they were the gatekeepers of the shit. You know what I mean? And it's like, now things are so much like branded, branded, like um, divided. I should say divided. Like, artists, are, artists don't come together how I see that. Like how I seen those guys were like putting on for the city. You don't see that too much. It's too much politics, too much bullshit. So I feel like definitely this I would I would I would, I would use that money and um definitely make an investment for myself first. <laughs> Personally, I went out to Jane and Finch, put on a bulletproof vest, and spent seven o'clock to one o'clock in the morning visiting sites that had previously had bullet-ridden people killed in the middle of the night. A lot of today's popular UK artists was raised in underprivileged areas which is known as the hood and has become successful icons in today's rap culture. Some are selling millions of records worldwide, winning awards and collaborating with A-list celebrities. On my recent trip to Toronto, I was driving through Jane and Finch and it reminded me of the hoods in London. Talent can come from anywhere. But it's a story what matters. Money on your head, we call it selling souls. My homie hustling backwards, he's still selling hoes. The reason I'm moving dap is cause I'm selling hoes. I'm on to a different chapter, I'm just telling you. Uh, what's stopping Toronto from being next up is uh, the politics. Basically because um everybody who's rapping right now. Like they're really niggas are really doing shit. Niggas are really from places. Like you see know what I'm saying? Niggas were in the streets before they started making this music shit. You see know what I'm saying? So it's like all this, all the fucking, all the pride and all that shit. You see know what I'm saying? It just it makes niggas not want to work with niggas. You see know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own different. This hood's beefing with this hood, so they're not making music with this nigga, or they're not fucking shouting out this nigga. Even though if these guys were to make music together, these guys would. You know what I'm saying? Do something totally. You know what I'm saying? The shit that they wouldn't even know they can do. You feel me, but. That's all it is, it's just it's the politics, the streets. Northside Benji is an artist from Toronto. In late 2017, he released a video for his single Confessions, which racked up over half a million views. As time pushes forward, his name has been flourishing in the streets of the Toronto rap culture. So uh, if we could fix the politics, could we make the scene more stronger? Yeah, 100%. But it's like, with the whole Peco man and like, you know, with the whole UK thing, it's these now these kids have money now these now these niggas have money you see what i'm saying so now they don't even they don't they don't care for the politics you see what i'm saying everybody's in the streets to get paper once you get this paper it's like and nothing else matters you see what i'm saying so it's like that's why all this like the music's just not too serious out there but out here it's like there's no labels or no nothing giving us this money you see what I'm saying? So we're still doing this street stuff. We're still doing this Ray Tay Tay. And it's still corn. Like, we're still feeding to the politics. You see what I'm saying? So that's how it is. Like. In there, take off um, what I spat for the first quarter. So I'm let me redo it. You want to redo it? Okay. That's us Alright, let's go. Yeah. 
See, I can't lose, see, I'm a winner, baby. Winner, baby. But maybe I've been feeling crazy. Feeling crazy. See, police move like I'm a villain, baby. Nigga, maybe. See, I'm just trying to whip these faces. Why won't the labels keep the money in the city? It's like, yeah. It's like with the Drake and the Weeknd and all that stuff, those guys aren't signed to nobody, no Canadian labels. Those guys are signed to all American labels. So it's like, like I said, like there's nothing, there's nothing out here. There's no en entertainment industry in Canada for, for people to, ah, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do this until I get signed to Sony Canada or some shit. Like Sony Canada's all branching out to the States too, you know what I'm saying? So everybody, we need to go to the States. So that's how it is. Like Canada doesn't really have it. We don't, we don't really have the entertainment industry like that. Yo. With a baby. See, I'm a with a baby. With a baby. Feeling crazy. Nigga, maybe. Uh, as an artist myself, would I sign to a US label or a UK label? Personally, I signed to a UK label only because. I'm from out here, I live in Canada, right? So it's like, if I get British pounds, the conversion is double, like, you know? That's just on a personal standpoint. That's all it is. Where do I see the Toronto rap scene by 2020? Uh, I see it, I see it, I see it change from what it is now, 100%. A lot of these, a lot of these cats in Toronto are not going to last, because a lot of these niggas' music do not have any substance at all, you see what I'm saying? So it's gonna change a lot, you see what I'm saying? But uh shit, I don't see it on a on a on the same pinnacle as as the states or even as the UK. But it's like we're working, you know? 2020 is close, right? But we're working. Canada doesn't have its own hip hop awards to celebrate its talent because it's mainly Toronto doing its thing, like you know, province wise, like the rest of these provinces, there's not a lot of street rappers or hip hop rappers doing their thing like obviously there's a couple of them you know but they're not making noise like toronto you know so that's mainly all it is but like much music tries to do tries to do its thing but they're not in tune to like the underground rappers out here you know what i'm saying like they're not in tune to the streets you feel me they're in tune to a whole nother era like the singers and all them type of people that you know shit if you gave me a million dollars to change the fucking music industry in Canada, in toronto what would i do to change it Shit, a million dollars is not a lot of fucking money when you think about it. I'll tell you that when it comes to all this music shit. Because you're going to fucking, these niggas are going to be asking for a million dollars. And then, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're trying to make your own label and all that stuff. Like, you have to have money. Like, you have to have accessible amount of money to be given out, to be dashing out. So, realistically, yo, a million dollars is not enough to change a lot out here. Come on. Come on. Tell me what UK directors coming to Canada, yeah? London to Canada, told them! We in the north side, baby. We in the north end. When I started my journey to Toronto, I didn't realise the impact the city would leave on me. There's someone that's been there from the start up until now. He goes by the name of Foreign. He's an up-and-coming artist raised in Hamilton, Ontario. We recently shot his music video on the same streets he lost his close friend on. I spoke to him to find out his views on the Toronto rap culture and what's stopping it from being next up. What's stopping Toronto from being next up? Mm, personally, I feel like ourselves. I feel like we don't really support each other the way we should, you know? We don't really, like, back each other up. We don't really, like, I don't know. I feel like in Toronto, the problem is, like, no one wants to see someone else do good because they're not doing good, you know? But, like, you got to you gotta live through others' others' achievements, you know what I mean? If you can't if you can't make a million dollars but your brethren can, then, yo, that should make you happy, you know? But, like, I don't know. I feel like it's just hating that shit, man. Like, same shit that's been going on forever. It's never going to stop. But we on the come up for sure, though, you know? You can't stop it. Like, there's nothing they can do about it. They saw my neck on my ears all the way down to my toes Rather put my homie on before saving a hoe Yeah, I did this shit all on my own My friends are dead in the back of a ghost smoking dope and me alone I can see Toronto breaking through in the UK culture Cause like, I feel like it's the same shit essentially Like, I feel like we live the same lifestyles We have the same cultures, you know? Like, we're just across the ocean from each other That's the only thing, the way I look at it Like, 
we have the same queen, same laws, same everything pretty much. It's just that you guys talk like this and then we talk like this. But at the end of the day, it's all the same shit. Yeah, I mean, you know, you see it all the time. I mean, like, there's so many big tracks that reference back to Toronto tracks that I don't even have to say. But, like, I feel like what we have here, there's nowhere else in the world, you know? And what's stopping the world from seeing it is us, ourselves. I feel like what we have, we're not exposing to the full potential like everywhere else is. And that's why everywhere else is booming and we're still kind of behind, you know? But the... Well, once we stop holding back and we really show the world what Toronto is, shit, that's, <laughs> that's when it's game over. If you gave me a million dollars to change the rap culture, I would, to be honest, I'd open up studios everywhere. It'd be a studio in every high school. You know what I mean? There'd be like studio courses where you could go learn songwriting, where you could go learn like how to make a beat you know how to mix and master like teaching people those things because there's a lot of people that want to do these want to be expressive and do these things but there's so much holdbacks you know what I mean like studio time and like someone teaching you and having access to the tools and you know what I mean like it's a lot so I feel like I would just give back and like give people the chance to express themselves however way whether it's art drawing painting music like uh, art is art expression is expression that's all it really is whether it's vocal same shit just give people the chance as a video director you observe what people are listening to and what's the most popular music at the time on my recent trip to toronto i liked the way the djs were supporting his own music from his own country i went to talk to another video director called dookie dukes to find out his views on what's stopping toronto's rap culture from being next up I think the only thing that's stopping Toronto from being the next stop in terms of breaking through this industry is the support. You know, there's a, there's no shortage of talent here, but there is a lack of support. And I think once we get that together, this shit, this city's out of here, really. We actually did have a chance to speak with witnesses. They did say that they heard multiple gunshots. When I asked how many gunshots, they couldn't say exactly how many. They said too many to even count. They lost count after a while. It's a choice you could live how you want it. Nobody ain't living it for you. Loyalty before the sun. But nobody ain't in this shit for you. Toronto is filled with talent. And the one thing that they don't have is the business side of things. And I think a lot of talent out here, especially me, like, like I'm doing a lot in this whole creative world. And I'm seeing a lot of creatives, like, they don't know what their next steps are. They don't even know their worth at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So, like, they're taking things, um, they're taking anything that comes to them. If, they, if, a, if a label comes to them right now and says, yo, I'm going to give you a 360 deal and I'm going to do all this crazy shit. In your head, you're thinking, yo, this is an amazing opportunity. But, like... They don't. They don't know when they're being raped and and when when they're they're being taken advantage of. And I think a lot of things here, a lot of people here, gets taken advantage of, um, just because they don't know the business side of it. But I think once they have the business sense, I mean, we need a lot more workshops out here with a lot more people who are in the industry. Uh, Toronto people don't really get to sit around people who are actually doing it in the industry. You know, and I think that's one of the things that kind of stops us and separates us from somewhere like UK where, yo, we got gigs, you got all these people and they, they fuck with their city. Toronto, when you, when you make it, you don't fuck with your city. And that's the craziest thing. You know what I mean? And, and it's hard because if you, if you're not nice, Toronto ain't going to support you. That's just straight facts. But that builds up some sort of anger and 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 shit in us where we're like you know what fuck it i'm gonna get out of here and i'm gonna make it and when i come back i'm gonna show you guys i did it but it's not like yo i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna try to put people on toronto people ain't really putting toronto people on and that's one thing that's fucking this whole system up Living they right to be honest, but we live in a lie to be honest. But nobody ain't getting it for it. But nobody ain't getting it for it. If we can keep the street violence 
separate from the music scene. Um, Toronto will be a lot further, you know, but it's hard because, you know, people that are in the streets and are living the street life, um, they're going to they're gonna talk about what they know. So eventually it has to get mixed and, you know, I mean, whatever they're putting out because artists want to tell the truth, right? So if someone is in the hood dealing with certain shit from the police and all that shit, they're going to talk about that. And, um, you know, so it's hard to keep it separate. But I think back to what I was saying about, you know, I mean, everything being more strategy than emotional. Once you focus on strategizing rather than being emotional about it, then we're gonna we're gonna be able to evolve and it doesn't matter where you come from you could be in the streets but you know i mean you could be talking that talk but you know a strategy in terms of you getting to that next level of artistry rather than yo i i talk i talk some shit about this guy and now he's he's looking for me ready to 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 do some shit and i think that's been happening in the city a lot you know what i mean like People be dry people be dry snitching on themselves and causing all this beef, you know what I mean? Rather than like, and that's all emotional. And I think, yeah, focusing on the strategy rather than the, rather than the emotion is where where the shit will be fixed. To be honest. For many of years, females been dominating UK music industry, from Miss Dynamite to Lady Leisha to Steph London. But Toronto's rap culture's lack of females. On my journey, I've come across one female that's been putting on a lot of work and showcasing her talent. She goes by the name of Candy K. My heart's beating double time just to make ends meet. I fucked up and let a nigga tell me how I can eat. What's stopping Toronto from being next up is ourselves. The fact that we don't support one another. The fact that we don't hype up our own friends that are artists, our own colleagues, our own neighbors. If we had supported our, each other more, I think that Toronto would be out of here because we'd have each other's support. Difficulties in Toronto, I would say, is I find it harder to get, as a female, to get more love from females in my own city whereas in the states i find it a lot easier to get love from my friends out there i don't know if it's because i'm not from the states but i just feel like the states is more accepting of artists than toronto toronto's just filled with a lot of hate you could bring all your friends out to a show or all the females you know out to a show and it's just a toronto thing for them just to sit there and just watch you versus clapping screaming um and applauding you so you mean like why wouldn't a Toronto label or Canadian label sign Canadian artists and them really blow up? It's because Toronto or Canadian labels don't really have the full money or the links or the connections to to push artists that much or to give artists the exposure they need. Whereas American labels, they have all the connections, they have all that money to be able to do that for artists. It's just a lot tougher for, for Canadian artists in general. They've been doing it, there's artists that have been doing it for years and they're just not able to blow big enough outside of Canada um, just because of the labels. Like it, it's just it's just tough. Like there's not too many. There's I don't even think I know one, one or two artists that have really blown outside of Canada, but started off blowing in Canada, if that makes sense. Most artists have to leave the country to blow. It's just it's just a fact. I feel like if people did squash the beef and unite and make music together, Toronto would definitely be out of here because they'd have each other's support. Um, all this, all these opposition and, and, and beef and, and all this messy stuff and, and, and them killing each other, it's just, I feel like you're here today, you're gone tomorrow, and it's not its not helping nobody. It's really not helping anybody. Um, but I feel like, you know, the power of people uniting can be something so much greater than than what is currently going on. Like you said, if, if they united, it could be really big because they'd have each other's support. They'd have... It would just be the whole city supporting each other. There would not, there wouldn't be anything else other than that. But it's it, this is the real world. It's not fantasy land, so... In 2020, I see the rap culture. I see more Toronto artists popping off. I see um, more females in Toronto coming up. Um, but I still don't see the beef squashed. I still see the 
separation and it's still being difficult for artists still to come up even though there will be more artists popping i still feel like it'll still be really hard for artists to still break through canada and, and get to the other side yeah, I like your pick, but I like your bitch better And I got that big fit behind that big H letter Hermes, 4200 for sweater Hermes, I make them bitches do whatever Sick, just got sicker Dip like a stripper Stop like a sticker She tick like a ticker When I get that pussy wet, she make it stiffer Can't you see me swagging, baby, take a picture I'm on the way to the recording studio to see two engineers that see a lot of Toronto artists come in and out. But I want to ask them, why doesn't Toronto have a record labels that's signing its artists from the streets like we do in England? So let's go and find out. Personally, I think one of the things that um, is stopping Toronto from being next up, uh, which we're which we're you know we're making way to, is um, just kind of getting the managerial you know infrastructure kind of kind of built up. I think that the city is full, full, full of talent. I think that, and from from all crevices, producers, excuse me, engineers, executive producers, artists, writers, we, we have a, a multitude of talent from all different levels of music. And um, I think there just needs to be more organization in terms of kind of clamping it all together and putting it in a position where it can take three steps in the door and kind of kind of thrive in that, in that right? Um, I think that answer lies in just, you know, Educating management and 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 really getting people who who have both a grasp on on what's happening here and the reach and the connection to be able to to talk to the people like across the border and, and across the sea. Okay, so so I, I work I work heavily with Benji and uh, he's a very good representation. I think that the Toronto rap at least the Toronto rap culture could thrive heavily in the UK. Um, because the UK, the UK music, I mean, to me at least, is, is um, how do I put this? It's like a very healthy blend between, like, real rap and, uh, for lack of a better word, like, commercial sounding music. You know, it, it definitely, it definitely, like, embodies what today's music is like. It also does have, like, a futuristic sound to it in the sense of, like, mm -hmm. that's where the... <laughs> where the music um, can and probably will go for, for a lot of different areas. Um, so working with, bringing up what I was saying, working with Benji, it's like I've 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 seen him kind of really embody uh, like a culture over there and a culture over here and, and fuse that within his music, and it sounds great. And I'm sure I'm sure you know not only him, I'm sure a, a vast majority of, of artists can relate a lot more. You know, in that market, and are, are are continuing and working in that in that field. But like sonically, absolutely, I think I think Toronto music. Um, a little, you know, past the question. I think Toronto music can survive in most any market. Mm -hmm. If I'm being honest, I agree. Yeah, I think I think Toronto artists could definitely have success in the UK simply because I feel the the cultures are very similar. You know what I mean? Like in yeah. in, in Toronto, we have a very like a heavy Caribbean influence through all the Caribbean immigrants that came here and stuff. And this is similar thing in the UK. So like when I hear people talk in the UK and how they move and stuff like that, I'm like, this is a lot of kind of like, what we yeah. do here too, you know? So I feel like there's a, it's like a, it's like a distant cousin, you know? So yeah. I, I feel definitely just because of the cultural aspect that people would appreciate it over in the UK. As Toronto's rap culture is growing day by day, I sat down with Face, the owner of All Money's Legal and manager to Thoroughbred to find out what needs to be done for Toronto's rap culture to be next up. They show no love, no love. murder separated friendships, yeah. Capsule the way lock is in the They would always treat us like we dangerous. Wow. Treat us like we famous. No, the life is expensive. What's stopping Toronto from being next up? Basically, I'm gonna say unity. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, there's so many conflicts going on, whether it's music related, whether it's street related, and I think people are having a, a difficulty separating the two. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, it's making everybody kind of have op music. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, it's like, I feel like we're not really progressing on larger scale, you know what I'm saying? And we're not really bringing out the best of ourselves because we're too focused on our opposition, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I think it is, it's just unity. 
I think in Toronto, if we squash the beef, and I think if we all work together and we figured a way to unify, there'll be a culture. Like, perfect example is Atlanta. We all seen high publicized incidences like the young Jeezy and the Gucci Man stuff, where even that led to, you know what I'm saying, death. But you see how they were able to come together on the radio station with DJ Drama, and they squashed the beef for a greater cause, which was to put on Atlanta, you know what I'm trying to say? And look, ever since then, Atlanta's been on. You know what I'm saying? So I think Toronto is close. We're very close to, you know, letting stuff go. Because if you notice, like, you're seeing a lot of people be supporting each other via, like, um, social media. You know what I mean? Like, promoting each other's music videos, projects, and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So I think we're slowly seeing it east to west. You know what I'm saying? And downtown. Look at when um, Drake, Press, uh, Smoke Dog, all those guys went to the UK. They're the younger generation. You feel me? And look how Pressa has a song with example Giggs. You feel me? So you already seen that he's able to understand that yo, Giggs is somebody of importance in the UK. You know what I mean? That yo, I need to do a song with him, you know what I'm trying to say, and cross over. So you're seeing it, you know what I mean? You saw the Smoke Dog and I think AJ Tracy. You know what I'm trying to say? Like you're seeing all these different ones. But like I pay attention, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think we already kind of know what it is, you know what I'm saying? You see um, a banana, you know what I'm trying to say, and his whole War the UK gig, you know what I mean? And the six in the UK and what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So I think Toronto knows what's going on. I think we're bridging that gap now slowly. Being a director, you catch a talent first hand before the public makes a decision. While I was in Toronto, I caught up Kevin Roberts, a director who works with a lot of rising acts in the Canadian rap culture. So what's stopping Toronto for being next up, in my opinion, personally, is the street violence, the gangs, the problems. I believe everyone should just get together, make good music, make good videos, and, you know, get to the next level. Yeah, and all these bands, I can't stop it, eh. God, how I'm making all this profit. She says she love me all the time, stop the nonsense. It's cause I'm flexing hard, Steve Austin. If we could separate the music in the streets, could we get an industry? Well, my thoughts on that, I def... I, it's kind of hard because in some in some ways it's like guys got killed it's like it's like people are making fun of people's homies it's like it's too deep for some people but i believe in if we could separate it from the young gener younger generations the kids coming up those kids that are 13 14 15 16 who want to rap who aren't really in the streets too too tough we could definitely separate that and build an industry and get toronto next up could I see Toronto artists and the sound break through through the UK and the rest of the world? In my opinion, yeah, for sure, because I've worked with a lot of artists in the city. I've seen guys underground get 100,000 views in the first day, which is like literally industry numbers. So I believe definitely we can get through. It's just we need the shout outs. We need the support from the mainstream guys to like give us more of the platform that we need. Right. We have the Drake. We have Drake, The Weeknd, Justin Bieber. We have Jesse Ray. We have so many artists coming from Canada that are amazing. And if they give us more of that platform, we can definitely break through to get to the next level. What could we do to make the money stay in the city? In my opinion, um, I believe the the, art, the mainstream labels have to find these guys. Like They're not looking at for them. They only see them once they get the 5 million views, the 2 million views, the 1 million view. They don't see them when I see them. I find these guys when they're just, when they have nothing out, when they have 20,000 views and I believe if the, the, the industry is better at finding these guys before they blow, the money will stay in the city rather than these guys move out of the city and get signed, sign better deals. If these kids had a mentor, do I think they'll be able to orchestrate their business better? Yes, I definitely believe that because I had a lot of business mentors in my, my, in my life, so I knew what to do with my money, I knew how to invest it. If these kids had what I had, they would definitely do, as, do the same thing. A lot of these guys will spend their money on foolishness rather than go to the studio, spend money on things that they need to get bigger. Proper videos, proper audio, proper recording, pictures, all that. So I believe if they have guys that are over them, holding their money, putting into the proper things, they'll definitely get bigger. But the problem with that is a lot of these guys are dumb and the people who they do sign to take advantage of them, which is why it's kind of hard. You know what I mean? Do I see by 2020 Toronto rap culture blossoming? By 2020, that's in two years. 
I definitely think so because right now I've already seen a big impact. I've been in the game for say two to three years now, and from what I from when I've started till now, there's way better visuals, way better content, way better audio. A lot of guys are getting way better views, so things just going up, numbers just going up, and it's not gonna stop here. It's gonna keep going up. Being in Toronto for two weeks was a great experience. Studying the rap culture and trying to figure out what's stopping Toronto from being next up. But three weeks after returning to the UK, I accompanied British award-winning director Frost, where I got to see Canadian rapper Tory Lanez on his hustle. From doing two shows in one night, to getting himself together to jump on set for his music video. It's been interesting seeing two sides of the music industry. From rising stars from Toronto, to multi-platinum selling artists from Toronto. About the last shit. They don't know about cops trailing and you got the pounds in the engine. They don't know about the nice. They don't know about the orders. They don't know about going through the border. Dogs running on the tour bus. Uh. Yeah, yeah, niggas and we going up, flipping, trying to keep it cordial. Fuck, nigga, we the older. In my time back from Toronto, I've noticed that Toronto rap coach has been channeling airs with a few UK artists. I went down to see Young Tory in a recording session while he was in the UK with British rapper Young Fume. It's a growl. Now I hit the stove, but I don't want to run the stove. I don't want to run the stove. One time. Tory hit man still like he obviously saw I don't know I think he was just he saw it to get me that man was just an up and coming artist in London doing man's thing obviously he gave me his feeling the sound feeling the music and he just reached out but it was just it's mad because I didn't even know but then as I put two and two together it's like I went to ATL Link Turk and that and it's like everyone's the same everyone's brother so it's just mad that it happened to be the same circle and shit but yeah we're here now, we're in London. We've smashed up like three songs. We got the craziest song though, the Yeah Yeah One, that's some not some precious for, but I'm not gonna lie, these two made it crazy. And it's lit right now. Twenty-four hours after meeting Young Tory at the recording studio of Young Fume, I headed down to his first UK headline show to see Canadian artists come to the UK and perform to a crowd that knows their songs word by word. Shows that the Toronto rap culture is not far from being next up. At the end of the night, I was able to catch up with UK rapper Nate Smalls to find out how the collaboration between him and Young Tory came about. We just linked up online still, like I fucked with his music, he fucked with man's music, so we just thought it's only right we did the street something, you know what I'm saying? As I was leaving Young Tory's UK headline show, I bumped into Little Six, a rapper from Jane the Finch in Toronto. I asked him about the similarities between London and Toronto's rap culture. I see the similarities though, even to, it's just like mainly the culture, you know? Because the thing that really attracts me is just like, honestly, the similarities, as simple as that. Because like, even if you see our, our, our music role models, like, for example, Giggs and Drake, their dogs, Baka, like, a lot of guys coming up that have paved the way for both our cities, like, they're linking. So clearly there's something going on here, right? So I feel like coming here just helps us understand the music culture more. If you get what I mean, help both of us grow. Young and had to get it, came up off that pavement. Young and had to get it, came up off that pavement. Young and had to get it, came up off that pavement. You say, man's in the dot, yeah? Applying this pressure, yeah? me. Came up on that Jane Street. Climbing up the steps, now we elevating. To the top floor, penthouse vacant. House. To the top floor, penthouse vacant. I was crushing roll, Michelin on my rims. Rip. I was in the cold and the snow with my Tim's. Where were you was at when I was shooting in the gym? 
Very second, very fourth quarter, we gon' win. Shit, yeah, we gone for the win. Shooters all around me, still attacking to the rim. Where were you was at when I was shooting in the gym? First, second, third, fourth quarter, we gon' win. Shit, yeah, we gone for the win. I suppose I'm shining, put some diamonds on my limbs. While in Toronto, I be flying like I'm Vince. Where were you was at when I was shooting in the gym? 5% of the tents when I'm riding in the whip. Product of the finch, put the product on the strip. Out of town, driven, putting mileage on the whip. Out of town.